and welcome back to Friday Nights in Athens. We're here at the halftime show. I've got Jackson Rowan, i got Camille Stroud, and guys, what a first half. I mean, Insane. On, that was an incredible first half, but it felt like it was fellowship for a while there. Camille, right on. Camille what can you tell me about how fellowship was uh, doing out there offensively? Yeah, guys, the Paladins came off hot. CJ oh, Givers yeah. is the star of the Paladins' first half tonight with 10 carries and averaging 8.3 yards per carry. Yeah. Not bad. Another one to note is Jonathan Gramby with 126 all-purpose yards so far tonight. Getting it done both in the air and on the ground. Incredible stuff sure. for the quarterback there. But again, I'm trying to see why CJ Givers had a thousand yards last year. Oh, sorry, uh, had over a thousand yards rushing over That's the right. season as a freshman. Easy I mean, to see. It's it's very easy to see, but it wasn't fellowship the whole way through. Athens Academy had a comeback. Jackson, what can you tell us about that offense? Yeah, so what we saw from their offense this first half is what we thought we were going to saw. A lot of production, way more yards than fellowship, Christian, as far as total team yards. But we saw them shooting themselves in the foot. Two fumbles, one from Wingfield, one from McGee that just siphoned that first half momentum on the two-yard line that killed them. Athens Academy should be winning this game, but penalties and errors, like we talked about in the pregame, has really held them back so far. But that dynamic duo on the backfield of Welch and Wingfield combined for almost 300 yards in the first half. They're playing some football. Yeah, I, I know that Keon Standifer fumble at the goal line was absolutely, right, absolutely. brutal for that team. I mean, to, to have an opportunity to score on paper, it feels like this Athens Academy team might be able to be up by a couple more, plus a fourth and one they weren't able to convert but right. yet they still power through to get that 21 to 21 I mean it was a battle how do you get over those turnovers and even those penalties that we're facing Jackson well you got to clean up the little things I mean we saw a little bit of rain in the first half and so you can maybe excuse that first fumble but certainly not the second by that time the ball's dry and you just got to protect the football at all costs so that's one thing second thing with penalties we're seeing some false starts some really just miscommunication errors and those are things that coach Alexander will clean up at the half we're seeing him really have a great coaching night. That call at the last play of the game, or the half rather, that was a great reverse call. Absolutely. Camille, I know you were on the sideline yeah. there with fellowship. What were you hearing over there from, from them and their coaching staff and team? You know, the coaches just keep re-emphasizing to them that they should be winning this game by 21 points. One of the coaches on the sideline that I overheard say, the score should be 21 to zero. We should wow. not have let that first those first couple of touchdowns go through. So there's a couple of things the Paladins really need to clean up um, defensive-wise, and um, we'll see what the second half has in store. Indeed. Something important to note, though, is 0-0 zero, zero, all, all the way around. That's true. Pretty much. Fresh, that's true. fresh slate. Yeah. Two quarters and, ago. And I think that's what's going to make this game so interesting, and we'll have more about this game later. Exactly. There's plenty of other interesting things going on around V8. As we know, we highlighted the matchup between North Dakota and East Forsyth yeah. at the top of the show. Well, North Dakota's taking care of business on the road, 23 As usual. to 6. Interesting stuff there. Yeah, I mean, that's what we expected from North Oconee. They're on the road. It's a tough environment, East Forsyth, but this team is just stacked. I mean, they're steamrolling their way through the regular season. I did not expect anything less. No, and Athens Christian, unfortunately, another tough game for them so far. 0-27 to against Commerce right now. Not a tough stuff for Athens Christian. Camille? Yeah, so it looks like Cedar Shoals is leading Madison County. Wow. Hot for Cedar Shoals. That is the score we did not expect did at, not all. at all. I mean, Madison County is an impressive team in their own Absolutely. right. And yet, of course. here we are. I mean, it's an absolute surprise that they haven't been able to come out with this one. But Cedar, what a performance from them. They clearly got something working. So they found I'm curious to see what's going on over there. Of course. But, of course, one team that we haven't talked much about, Prince Avenue Christian on a bye this week. It's very interesting. But amidst that, there's also the interesting stuff of the new high school NIL that we talked about the top of the show. Athletes are now eligible to receive NIL and high school in Georgia. That was a law, that was something passed at the beginning of this month and our very own Meadow Barrow, typical producer, ended up getting in front of the camera <laughs> to uh, talk to Aaron Philo and a few others from Prince Avenue. So very interesting conversations had, but let's go ahead and take a look at those conversations. After a 66 to nine vote on Monday, October 2nd, the Georgia High School Association approved high school athletes' ability to profit from their name, image, and likeness. According to the new rules list of regulations, students are not permitted to use school names, logos, uniforms, or any items that include school mascots or any GHSA trademarked logos or acronyms in connection with NIL advertising. 
we had the opportunity to speak with Prince Avenue quarterback Aaron Philo, along with his head coach Greg Vandegrift. Philo recently committed to Georgia Tech and will graduate from high school in December. And he says that the new rule allows for athletes like himself to be rewarded for all of the hard work that they put into the game. Yeah, I'm super excited. I think it's a really a great thing for high school sp sports if uh, everyone like follows the rules. With the help of a designer, Philo said he is currently in the process of constructing his own website. He aims to use this website to demonstrate to potential employers who he is as a person, both on and off the field. You know, it's really new, so I haven't had a lot of chances to explore everything yet. But I'm sure later down the road they'll get involved in some Prince Avenue head coach Greg Vandergriff, who is the father of Georgia quarterback Brock Vandergriff, said that if Brock had the opportunity to make money off of his name, image, and likeness in high school, he and his family would most likely shy away from the idea. I'm aware of NIL, I'm aware of what's going on as a parent and again with my son. We just no big deal. We don't we don't need the money to make him play harder or play better or go to a different school. I only believe the few overzealous uh, parents or boosters are going to be spending money in high school. I think it'll be dependent upon how highly recruitable the kids are and stuff like that, but I still mm -hmm. think it's more of a college game than high school game. Vandegrift's daughter, Audrey Vandegrift, committed to play softball at the University of Alabama earlier this month and will graduate from Prince Avenue in 2024. But the Vandegrift family won't be worrying about NIL until she begins honing crimson, red, and white. I have three college um, athletes in my family. And we got we have her official visit this weekend in Alabama, so we'll be rolling over Friday. Mm -hmm. And supposedly they do some NIL with some of their softball girls, so we'll we'll know more Friday, Saturday, Sunday. For the Carmichael Sports Media Institute at UGA, this is Meadow Barrow. <laughs>Thank you so much, Meadow. Meadow, of course, couldn't be here with uh, with us today as she's dealing with an illness. So, Meadow, we hope you get better. Feel but, better. Guys, we're about to kick oh, off. Right. They're about to behind us right now. So, guys, right. what are keys? Jackson, I'll start with you. What does Athens Academy have to do to get a win here? Uh, yeah, number one is minimizing those penalties, oh, those the errors key. that are just killing them right now. And I think, two, you got to get the pass game going off. a little bit more to open up the offense. And, Camille, same question to you. I mean, give the ball to Jonathan Graham or CJ That's what they need to do. Yeah. No doubt. Hey, feet is the right pieces, right? I feel like Athens Academy can take the same thing. <laughs> but, guys, we'll be back with post-game coverage right after this. But for now, we're going to go back up to the NFHS broadcast up at the booth. Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.